Hamilton and the guy on deck, Michael Wilson, have made a lot of noise this year for Stony Brook. Ground ball, and that'll find a hole on the left side, a base hit for Hamilton. Well, this is exactly how Stony Brook plays. They don't try to pull balls in the outside part of the plate. They're going to go with almost every pitch they see. That was a pretty good pitch. Two-seam fastball running down and away from Hamilton. He didn't try to pull it, didn't try to hook it, just hit. Fastball low and a one-out walk, so two on for the Seawolves with Brandon Alamo coming to the plate. Legitimate baseball program that has happened over the course of time under head coach Matt Sink. To second, could be two. There's one on the first. The throw is wide, and this will play to run. Well, I tell you what, just a tailor-made perfect. Couldn't take it off of a fungo bat any better. Ground ball to turn double play. Bruce started second base, comes and gets it. It's a nice flip right to the chest of Josh Smith, who has all day to cut it loose, but instead he throws it down the line. Chris Reed can't keep it in front. And what should have been an inning, inning. One of the last 14 pitches he's thrown have been out of the strike zone. Big 3-1 here. Ball four, he walked in a run. Three straight base runners without the benefit of a home runs last year in junior college. Drafted again. Bouncing ball. It's just inside the chalk past the bag. This will score at least two. Reed getting the green light. He's coming home. No throw. Bases clearing double by the sophomore, Saul Garza. Well, the hottest hitter on LSU's team comes through in a big way, and this has been the difference for him. Trying to pull a lot of balls early when he was not having success. As of late, he is spraying it. That is a dart down the left field line. You see the right fielder, Alamo, goes to get it. Nolan Kane, the third base coach, cranked Chris Reed around as well. And the Tigers are... That lineup has been really good. Matt Broussard enjoyed a great SEC tournament, 6 for 13 in Hoover, and he's got his first base hit here in Baton Rouge. Here comes the throw, it's cut off, and now they'll have Broussard hung up. Nobody's covering first, and a great heads up play. That was a great job. He's at 349, Eddie Furness, the former LSU great at 352 all time. Differences to Plantis this year showed a little more pop. hit up the middle. This will score a run. LSU tacks on another one. It's six to one. And that is career hit number 350. Two off the school record. Well, that's what he has done best in his four years. He has stayed to the middle part of the field. A lot of these players playing for both of these teams, obviously, that doesn't mean a whole lot to any of them what happened back in 2012. Not under it. Wilson drifting. Runners tagging. Catch is made. And a run will score. DuPlantis touches home. LSU tacks on yet another lead. Got ball up there. Their first nine games were on the road, including a series in Fayetteville against fellow SEC brethren Arkansas. Fly ball launched in the deep left. That is long gone. Wow. Watson with his sixth home run of the year and probably not one hit farther than that one. That was crushed. Well, we talked about Watson may be the key. Him and Daniel Cabrera, if they can get hot, they certainly can carry LSU to go along with the other hot players. And I don't think I've ever seen Zach Watson hit a ball from this. Just a hanging, breaking ball. And boy, you talk about lean on one. Recognized it early, set back on it, and delivered a ball that went clear out of the stadium, straight away left field. Ball one strike. 
that's going to be a balk. Yeah, balk. What else could go wrong for Stony Brook on the mound? It looked like Milch had towed the rubber. And when he went to come into his set position, the ball just slipped out of his hand. So he's on the rubber, ready to go. And right there, just twirl, twirling the ball in the back of his hand. It falls off. We'll be fortunate if you get half of those into Omaha. Broussard lofting one deep left. It's got a chance. It's at the wall, and it's gone. Brent Broussard, have yourself a day. Third hit of the game, and a long ball, his first of the year. Now, how about that? We saw Stormy Cooper, the number nine hole hitter for Southern Miss, get his first large one of the day, and there's Brent Broussard. Guess what? He hits his first long ball of the season as well. Young man that had an outstanding SEC tournament was named to the all-tournament team. Just a fastball looked like just up in the zone, and he simply just barrels it up to straightaway left field. And rest goes back and runs out of room. And Brant Bruce was his first career home run as well. I mean, it's he's a junior college kid, showed up to LSU last year. Shot to third, and that's going to get over the glove of Hughes and into left field. So finally a break for Stony Brook. Yeah, we've seen how Hughes go up the ladder to snag a couple of those balls. It is. You don't want to take one of these elite jobs because it comes with the territory. Line shot, base hit. Hamilton is now a perfect three for three. So Chris Hamilton has been the lone bright spot so far in this game for Stony Brook. And I mean no cheapies, Bixner. He has found the barrel all three times to the plate. Now one of the top prospects on the Stony Brook roster, Michael Wilson, junior center fielder. Bouncing ball to second, could be two. There is one on the first, no. Run scores. Get Wilson credit for hustling up the line. That's the difference between an out and a run. Yeah, the ball just was not in 51 as we speak. You see the shift on Duplantis. He made him pay for it last time. He's going to make him pay for it again. They might want to try maybe some new analytics or some new strategy of some kind because <laughs> Antoine Duplantis knows a thing or two about going the other way. I'm telling you, I don't understand why they're shifting so much, but that does it. Antoine Duplantis was going the other way, and I promise you, half of those base hits he has in his career have gone that way. He easily stays inside the baseball as well as anybody in the country, and that ties... Dr. Eddie Furness at 352 hits in LSU baseball history. Ties the school record. It also ties him for second place all time in SEC history. And of course, Jake Mangum of Mississippi State holds that on him. Local parts of the country have success. No, I, I totally agree. That comes in and hits him. And flips the bat in disgust. Run will score, so he'll get credit for an RBI, but I don't think that's what he had in mind for that run batted in. You know, they've always good at the top, but now you get five teams from the Pac 12 in. Ball is scorched deep left center field, but flat down by Wilson in center. Run will score to make it 16 to 2. Second RBI for Reed. Well, Michael Wilson, the center fielder for Stony Brook, really got on his horse again. Pounded on the dirt to shortstop, and it's Grande again that has problems in the field. Not used to seeing that out of the all-conference shortstop, Nick Grande. Because, he, you know, Something flared up from an injury standpoint. We hope that's not what the case is. You hope it's just say, hey, just for an emergency use, we want to have you available. That ball is launched high and deep to left and gone into the left field landing. 
solo blast for Dylan Resk. Fourth home run of the year for the senior. Well, there ain't no quit in Stony Brook, I can tell you that. The Seawolves will not lay down under any circumstances, and that was a ball hit as hard as any ball we've seen hit today. I mean, it got out like right now. It was gone. Just a fastball, a mistake left up out over the plate, and boy, Resk knew it immediately, and that ball's about six or seven rows deep in straightaway left field. Home run. He does, and it's blown by him. Fastball at 92, a perfect way to seal the deal for the LSU Tigers who defeat Stony Brook 17-3.